Hello there YouTube, Devin here again with my second video of today and it's also a remake video because I found the cover for this so I figured I'd do the uh, remake this video uh, so that you guys can get all the information I can possibly give you. Now what we have here is probably the rarest version of the M1910 style of canteen, okay? Now, this is the rarest version, and we'll get into what makes it the rarest version and everything like that um, here after we go through some background. Now, the M1910 canteen came out in 1910, obviously, to replace the round uh, canteens with the leather uh, strap that went around um, in 1910. So, like, the pretty much very little has changed with them since, like, just after the Civil War. So, this served with America throughout the Indian Wars and the Spanish-American War, that round canteen, and I'm working on getting one right now. So uh, I've got a couple of them that I'm looking at. Um, I'm just trying to talk down on the price here because they're they're pretty hard to find in good condition. I want a good condition one. So I'm, I'm looking for one of those, and I've got a couple places I'm trying to nail it down. I'll do a video on that when I get the chance. Um, but these canteens came out um, originally to make... Um, gear more streamlined um so uh people weren't um staying out in the field for for weeks on end you really didn't need a half gallon of water um like was in the a uh, big uh spanish american war canteens you really didn't need that much you could get by on a smaller amount because now supply chains were better everything was and they needed something that would integrate better with the web gear that they were issuing. So this was the solution. The 1910 canteen is a, a step to modernize. And it got rid of a lot of stuff. Because you now didn't need to carry a separate mess kit. You didn't need to carry a cup. You didn't need to carry a frying pan or a pot or anything like that. Uh, in addition to your canteen. Um, you could fit your silverware in the pouch. And your cup would fit over your canteen. Which you could also cook out of. So this streamlined uh, this streamlined a lot of military logistics down to a way smaller package and a way smaller amount of weight to carry in one self-contained unit. Now, this is uh, what you call the M1910 uh, seamless canteen. Uh, you can tell by the fact that it has no welded seam on it anywhere, um, which is makes this a very, very rare canteen because they were only made for about one year. Uh, well, actually about two years, but in two separate batches, and we'll get into that later. But only in 1910, uh, and one batch in 1916 that we'll get to, were these seamless canteens made. And they were made a lot the same way, because this is before, like, machines, and, you know, everything could just quick stamp out everything and stuff like that. It was, it was work to make these. I took a lot of craftsmanship and a lot of skill, so they were expensive. And the best way to do it is one of the most modernized things in the United States at the time was glass blowing, blowing bottles for beer, actually, um, were made by putting a ball of red hot glass on a pipe, all right, and sticking that pipe into this mold that was in the shape of a beer bottle, and then they would shoot air down the pipe, and it'd blow the glass up into the shape of the beer bottle. It would just blow into the shape of the mold. And they did that with this in the military canteen, except it was aluminum. So they'd take this molten aluminum, and they'd blow it into this canteen shape, this kidney shape that's so familiar now. This is the grandfather of all, all M1910 style canteens uh, right here. And then they quickly went to uh, one where they would they modernized it and found a way to cheapen production to where they would have a uh, stamp out two halves of the canteen and they would weld it all the way uh, up each side and across the bottom. And then later they would switch it to being welded across here and then later they would ditch the welds entirely and they'd just crimp it. There'd be like this lip that would hang out and they'd crimp it and it would fit into this uh, into their cups. Now, this is a very, very rare version. Um, you can tell because um, every canteen, uh, ev every 1918 canteen cup and canteen made before 1918 uh, will not have a date here. And on the cups, uh, the, they're on the bottom of the handle here, all right? And uh, also, a lot of times, it's on the bottom of the cup itself. But I got these two together, and these are a very, very rare 
um, set because at the time these were made, um, they were made out of non-precious materials, which is why this is made out of aluminum and not steel or something else. Because, for one, aluminum was known to be a safe metal. It wouldn't make people sick or anything like that. It was heat-resistant enough to cook out of and um, everything like that. And it was very corrosion-resistant as well as being a lighter material. And it wasn't a precious metal, so aluminum was the way to go for these canteens. But the hardware, on the other hand, um, is made out of a silver alloy. Now, because silver wasn't a pre well, it was a precious metal, but it wasn't a precious commodity to the military. Um, so precious metals to the military would be like iron, steel, brass, stuff like that to make ammunition and weapons and sabers and stuff out of at this time. Um, so they went to a silver alloy, silver being another metal that they knew was food safe, silverware, getting its name being made out of silverware for centuries, um, was a good way to go. And it was also very corrosion resistant so that every branch of the military could use this canteen and they know it wouldn't, wouldn't rust very easy or tarnish very easy and cause problems to the uh, user as far as maintenance goes. So this was meant to be a very, very durable, long-lasting canteen. And like I said, in 1911, uh, they kept the um, silver alloy, but they switched the, to the uh, welded uh, thing, and then they started dating them all in... 1918, and around 1918, they started switching to brass hardware. Um, now that World War I was over, uh, you know, and the U.S. economy is very stimulated by the war and everything like that, so they, they brass became a not-so-precious metal anymore, and they started making stuff out of brass because it was cheaper than silver, obviously. Now, the original M1910 canteens would have a perfectly flat top, all right? They wouldn't be knurled all the way from top to bottom like this, and knurled is this grip here. All right, they would just be knurled at the very, very top, like a quarter inch at the top, and the thing would be flat, which is how I know that this is the rarest canteen uh, ever made in U.S. inventory, was because in World War I, they started to lose canteens to attrition rates, and just back in the States to attrition rates, people just misplacing them, selling them, doing whatever, and they needed to make more faster. And so the original company that made the very first ones in 1910 got another contract in 1916, to make more blown canteens, and that's one of these. And it was a blown canteen, it still had the silver hardware, because they still had leftovers from their first canteen contract, so that it got the silver hardware uh, in 1916, but it got the 1916 cap, which is fully knurled, and it's rounded on the top, okay? And that makes this the rarest version of the M1910 canteen. And now I got this cup with it, which is made by the same manufacturer, now, it's a very, very thick set of aluminum, all right? Uh, it has a silver alloy handle, okay? And um, it's probably, it's made by the same people that did this, because I'm guessing the, this came as a set, and I'm guessing they were probably together their whole life, and I'm guessing this probably wasn't used anywhere other than stateside, if at all. Um, I got it like this. I didn't have a pouch for it. Um, uh, when I got it, I bought a pouch separate, and I wanted um, something very, very uh, early, and I got the um, uh, cavalry style of pouch. Now, um, just to show you that this is a very, very early canteen cup. Now, you can see there's no date there on the bottom of the cup. There's no date on the bottom of the handle. All right, there's no date anywhere on any of this stuff because it's all pre-1918. Um, it's also, I could tell it's from that one company that made these uh, very early on, because it's a blown canteen. There were only one company that made the blown canteens, uh, as well as the cups with the silver alloy fittings, uh, including the chain, which is silver alloy. So, um, now this is very, very tight fitting. Uh, as you can tell by the squeak. Um, now, here we have, um, the, uh, Another reason you can tell it's the uh, silver alloy is because it doesn't rotate. It's all, this is all one piece that was connected to the canteen later. Um, so the brass ones later would be a ring that was just put around uh, the canteen. Now it's a very, very narrow mouth. Um, holds about 750 mils of water. It's a little bit smaller. This is smaller than the standard USGI canteens today. Um, uh, the cork I'm guessing was replaced in at some point because it's very, very good looking. 
Um, you could tell it's a very, very old uh, cork, even pre-World War II. It's a little bit dry, if you can hear that, that cracking, because uh, I'm guessing this canteen just wasn't used, um, or it was used very, very little, and you could tell it's a pre-1918 because the cork is all one piece. It's not a piece in a bunch of resin. It's one piece of top bark cork. Uh, so, um, which is, uh, another reason that you can kind of predate this canteen to the, to the, another time, because in around, uh, the 20s they started using, um, the chunk type cork, where it's not all one piece, you could tell it's like, kind of like a wine cork, where it's a bunch of little pieces put together, um, so, I really, really like, uh, the L-Handle canteens, uh, and stuff like that, and the L-Handle canteen cups, this is the rarest canteen I have in my collection, um, I, I acquired it a long, long time ago, and it was about, um, I found it at an estate sale, uh, from a guy that was a picker. Now, this picker guy had it, and, uh, his wife didn't know really what it was, uh, I'm guessing, because I got it for pretty cheap, but me being a nerd and collecting a lot of the military stuff a lot of other people don't want, like, uh, weird helmets, uh, and shoes and stuff like this. People people want lots of camouflage and weapons and stuff like that, whereas I'm fine with collecting the trinkets. Um, but we'll put this aside now and we'll take a look at the cover. Now this is a reproduction cover because I don't, because um, I honestly right now can't find the real one. But this is uh, the cavalry style canteen. Now originally everyone was issued a canteen with something like this, just like this where it would slide over your web gear, and that's all you would have, all right? But it's very hard to reach your canteen and undo, you know, your flaps and stuff like that and everything while riding a horse, you know, and trying to maintain control of your horse. So what they did for the cavalry was they took the normal canvas pouch, they all came with canvas pouches, and they put little loops on the side, leather loops on the bottom and on the side, and they put this brass and leather strap that would, it would sometimes, I've seen two versions, ones that just are single, solid, continuous strap like this, right? And then they'd put a brass hook on it. Or they would have two rings that you would hook into a brass hook um, at the top. So, but this is a um, private purchase model, and you can see pictures of these where they, they asked for full leather canteens because they were more durable than the canvas. Um, so, you see a lot of people get canteen pouches made out of leather, but the original ones they would have been issued uh, would have been canvas, and they would have said U.S. on the front. Uh, they would have been stamped, and they would have had this brass hook, and what you would do is this brass hook then is then instead of having to reach around on your web gear and your belt and stuff like that with everything else flopping off of it, you could hook this to your horse's saddle, and it would be easier to get at, whether mounted or dismounted and everything like that. So that was a, a thing that was adapted for the cavalry, um, not a big fan of the cavalry, I'm more of an infantry person, but, uh, the cavalry covers are the rarest ones, uh, to find. Uh, so, here it is. This is my reproduction, uh, leather, uh, cavalry cover. Um, you can tell because it doesn't have very good snaps on it. Um, it is, uh, actually pretty historically accurate. It's entirely felt lined, uh, like they would have come. Um, it's very, very thick leather, uh, as you can tell. This is probably, like, three-eighths of an inch thick. Um, so it's very, very thick. It's like bridal leather, like you would use to make a harness or something out of. Uh, it's very, very high quality. You can see the uh, nice stitching, the very nice brass uh, buckles on it. The only thing I don't like uh, was they really went cheap on the like spring tab that closes, and it's kind of tarnished and everything like that. Um, but it works. So uh, it's pretty, pretty much just for this canteen, and I don't take this canteen out and I don't show it to lots of people because a lot of people for one don't give a shit about canteens and for two uh they can't really appreciate the history and the rarity of this canteen they they just think it's stupid that I spent the amount of money on this that I did and everything like that but I'm I'm doing it to preserve a piece of history so hopefully you guys like this video and uh you like this sort of thing and um you subscribe if you like this channel where you could see more of this stuff like that if you have any um, comments, questions, additional information, suggestions for future videos, leave those in the comments and I'll do my best to get to them uh, as I see them. So until then though, hopefully I see you guys in the next video and I'll talk to you later. Bye.